Right, if you're just joining us, you're watching TVC Breakfast. So we were just laying the foundation to mm. discussing the uh, devaluation of the Naira. And it stands now 500 Naira against $1. Mm. So many Nigerians have been complaining, uh, go to the markets. They talk about the fact that every the cost of things have skyrocketed mm -hmm. things you have you, you have 1000 what you used to buy before you can't buy it anymore and so on some with a hundred naira would not buy or a thousand naira would not buy what a hundred naira could buy could buy exactly but the real question mm -hmm. is is devaluation an option for the naira and mm -hmm. that's the basis of our discussion uh, this morning of course uh, Nemeka Obiariri uh, financial analyst is here uh, and you were trying to make a point on these two critical mm. issues following the question Mike asked you e exactly and uh, you know when people talk about um, further devaluation of the mm. Naira um, I am convinced and uh, to every other discerning expert in the market there that at 500 Naira to one dollar mm. the Naira is actually undervalued Naira should be trading comfortably at 325 to 350 Naira to $1 mm. if we take okay. the proper steps. Like I mentioned earlier on, mm. there is the factor of demand and supply. Now, the question we should ask ourselves, for an export-oriented economy like China, devaluation is an advantage. In mm. fact, the lower the value of their currency to other currencies, the better the for better. them mm. because it will make the cost of their goods cheaper mm -hmm. to other importers. But for an import-oriented economy like Nigeria, it's a disadvantage because we practically import everything. And that's now, what the president has the, been the, saying. The question is, it's not what the president is saying. What are they doing? Mm -hmm. Now, we have two factors here, the factors yeah. of demand and supply. If the demand for the dollar is to import capital uh, equipment, mm -hmm. it's good. But if the demand for the dollar is to import consumption of things we can produce mm. here. That is why it is bad. Now, I will give you instances and illustrations. Mm -hmm. In 2004, thereabout, mm. Obama, um, President George Bush, brought out a beautiful program to support Africa, the African Good Opportunity Act. Yes. The AGUA program was intended to encourage African countries to ship in garments and apparels into the United States. Mm -hmm. Those are low technology driven. Um, um, production products. products. Mm. Now, annually, America imports over hundred billion dollar worth of garment and textile materials into their country. I took time to look at who are those suppliers to the United mm. States of America. Mm -hmm. You will discover that countries like Bangladesh, countries like Vietnam, Vietnam exported over ten billion dollar worth of garment Pakistan. and textile materials mm -hmm. into into America. Bangladesh exported five point seven billion dollar. Honduras, little Honduras, island of Honduras, even less, uh, smaller than Aja, exported over <laughs> $2.7 billion worth of garments and textile materials into America. Nigeria, the leading giants in Africa, what have we done over the last 15 years? The Agua window has been extended to 2025 mm -hmm. to take opportunities, yeah. to, take, to make use of these opportunities. Now, let me explain to you. We have the right resources in Nigeria the right people, the right low technology to be able to exploit this opportunity. If you go to Aba, if you go to Kano, if you go to Onecha, if you go to some of these areas, Nigeria has no business importing such things. Most of our military forces, paramilitary agencies, import their clothes, their boots, their belts, things that we can comfortably produce in this economy. Mm -hmm. And we say we are having problems. We talk about buying Niger. The question is, those things that we can produce comfortably in Nigeria, why are we not producing them here? Are there really any goods we can produce comfortably? Now, that's the underlining uh, yes. word there. Now, let me explain comfortably to you. Comfortably, without power, without other let, let, um, let, let, let me elements. Let me explain yes. this to you. You ask yourself this question. What comparative advantage does a Bangladesh or a Honduras or Vietnam have over Nigeria? That's the first question you should ask yourself. Mm -hmm. I have said this thing severally on different fora. Mm -hmm. Now, we have... In Nigeria, we import things. There are consumables that we can that we can actually produce that we import. Yeah. Things like textile, things like garment, things like consumables. I have mm -hmm. asked this question. We have agencies in Nigeria that monitor these things. CBN has a record of who imports who in Nigeria because you must open from M's if you want mm -hmm. to, to go through the official window. If you don't want to go through the official window, you want to go to the black market, you must pass through customs and exercise department. Now, the question is, do we have a record of the people that import all these kind of things? It's very, very simple. 
If, for example, now, what are the policies and incentives that you are putting in place to encourage the production of those things here? If, for example, now, we have XYZ company that imports textile materials from China or from Bangladesh or from India, what stops us from sitting down and asking, saying to the person, okay, since we import these things, can we go into negotiation, provide policies, legislative incentives? If they can site their factory here in Nigeria, partnering with you, the local partner, we can give them an offtake arrangement that whatever they produce, we will buy it of them. And we can ensure them that at any point in time they want to take out their dollar. We can even head it if it is two years, three years, four years, five years. CBN can say, if you're bringing your equipment into Nigeria, as also XYZ value of dollar, over the next five years, we can guarantee you that we will send dollar back to you if you want to repatriate your capital and your interest or your whatever your end is back to your country. But there must be incentives. Those companies that will go to Pakistan to go and import boots, belts, clothes. If you check out the number of people that come, we have over three million military so paramilitary agencies. agencies if you bring those companies here look at those people that import it now the, the, i mean you've you've asked a very vital question then and that's a question we want to ask every time we talk about the the state of the naira whether it's inflation and all of that the question is so how come we're not able to take advantage of those things that we really can manufacture or produce that is, what is the missing link then that is the, the issue of you know what is the essence of government Government is there to provide policies and programs that support entrepreneurship, mm. that supports outputs. Factors of production, we have land, we have labor, we have capital, we have technology. Now, in these areas, I'll give you another example. Education. I will give you other, other people. Malaysia started the same time with Nigeria, even Singapore. Yeah. A, a friend of mine told me a story about a, a university in the UK. Out of a class of 29, 16 of them are Nigerians. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And they were paying six, they, their school fees about sixteen thousand pounds per annum. And out of the five faculty teachers in the school, three were Nigerians. Now the question is: every year we export over two to three to four billion dollars on education, mm -hmm. even to Ghana here, even to mm -hmm. Benin Republic. Yeah. Ninety percent of students in Benin Republic University are Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Now Malaysia did something very very unique. If you go to Malaysia University today, they were suffering the same kind of problem. They went into partnership with foreign universities. Like in the UK, they plan their programs. Mm -hmm. They don't want to suffer their infrastructure. Unlike here, where we don't plan things. I went to Namibia some five years back, and I saw a well-laid road being re re retired. And I asked them, this road, there's no gully in this road. There is no portal anywhere. Why they say there's a program that after five years, the road will be relayed. And that's why they are doing it. But here, we want everything to decay. Take for instance, the education sector. We waste four billion dollars every year seeking for education outside there. Ghanaian people come from the UK to Ghana to go to school. Lagos like University of the School. Mm -hmm. Ghana is a small country compared to it's not even smaller yeah. than Lagos. The Lagos economy is bigger than the Ghanaian economy. True. What stop us? We have an education minister. We have other agencies, NUC. What stops us from providing policies, providing the incentives, providing the guides for Nigerian universities to go into such partners? I have two younger brothers that went to Malaysia mm. to school. They spent two years in Malaysia and went back to UK for their final year program. So mm. they, some of these the, Malaysian the universities... The when mm. it comes to policy, just like the Philippines, you know, organizing uh, some kind of program where you produce enough nurses. Now, Philippines exports nurses all over Cuba does the same thing. The Cuba, Cuba does Cuba the same. exports for, for doctors. doctors. I will give you an example. The issue you. of health. Mm -hmm. The Eco Hospital Group in Nigeria said the same time as the Apollo Hospital Group in India. How did India grow their medical tourism? It's no brainer. Every day, Tom and Harry, if you have ear problem, you have throat problem, you run to London, you run to America. What did India do that we cannot do here? <laughs> In one of my, I, I, I happen to advise a lot of agencies, even governments. There was an agency, I won't mention the name of the agency. Before in Nigeria, we used to have dispensary outfits in the 774 local government in Nigeria mm. for the Nigerian police divisions mm. where they can go buy drugs, have doctors, have pharmacy, look at them. Today we don't have any of those. And I ask myself this question. Do you know, I have groups that we have been talking to, some of them from Israel, some of them from India, that says, simple, if you have centers of for example, I can come to, they can come to you like, I say, okay, you need like, you need teaching hospital, I want to work with you. Mm -hmm. Give us a block. We will set up world-class diagnostic medical centers. Mm. We will provide all the equipment. All we want is that we will allow us to run it. They will supply the equipment. Let me tell you, 
it is easier and more profitable mm. for an Indian company where we we'll go for medical tourism to have their offices here in Nigeria because they will have more clients to attend to. For you to go to India for medical tourism, you must have at least four million naira. Yes, but there's somebody that can have one million who may not be able to have all this mm -hmm. that can get the, get same. the same treatment here. All they need is that we must fashion our policies, programs that can allow them to come here and say, okay, let us set up shops here. Mm -hmm. The question is, and the problem that is facing most of these investors, how do we bring our money in? And how do we take, take our money out? out? Mm. When we want bringing to. them in here will create so jobs. many, mm. so many issues, a lot of so face. many issues, Obiri, exactly. But we're going to, as much as possible, try to stay uh, within. As much as we, of course, we do appreciate all of the things that you're lining out. There's a policy um, scarcity, if I could put it that way. Mm -hmm. But we'll see how we can narrow it down to whether devaluation is an option for the Naira and how it will help the Naira economy already of, or not. Already of over, over, over devalued. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll All right let, let's go on a break, uh, but certainly we're going out on TVC Entertainment. Mm. Viewers there can continue with t the breakfast program on Concert Channel 190 and DSTV Channel 418. You can also continue to watch the show on Go TV 45 and ACTV 510. Don't go away. Right, if you're just mm -hmm. joining us, you're watching TBC Breakfast. We're discussing the health of the Naira in here. Mm -hmm. And uh, lots of Nigerians have been uh, complaining of what, uh, how the Naira is going, falling and falling and falling. But we have uh, 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 Nemek Albiari with us in here. He is a financial analyst and we have been talking about this. Now, Nemeka, let, let us understand, as it is right now, because the past few months, the Naira has not really... Um, stabilized for more than one month on a roll. Mm. He has always been nose diving and nose diving and nose diving. Yeah, but how helpless is the Naira do from where he's standing right now? Naira mm. is not helpless. Okay. It's just that those that should have helped the Naira are not helping Naira. Mm. And uh, like I've said, it's, it's, there's no brainer in this thing. It does not require skyrocket science to help the Naira. And we must tell ourselves the truth and do the right things. You know, the problem we have is that we we do not have programs and rational outputs that guides us to measure towards and actually uh, you know to fashion our policies towards i'll give you an example you know you ask yourself this question why is lagos state getting it right and we're not getting it right at the center and other parts of nigeria i'll give you an example last week lagos state government has been operating with a blueprint that was developed over 10 years ago that will extend to 2025 on four critical sectors. Ambode just came up and said, very simple, in the next five years, I will require $30 billion to be able to develop key critical infrastructure for my state. And out of this $30 billion, which is an expected output, he has rationalized objectively mm. that he can only get $1.6 billion. Why is Lagos State getting it right? And we're not getting it right at the center and other parts of Nigeria. I will give you an example. Last week, Lagos State Government has been operating with a blueprint that was developed over 10 years ago that will extend to 2025 on four critical sectors. Ambode just came up and said, very simple, in the next five years, I will require $30 billion to be able to develop key critical infrastructure for my state. And out of this $30 billion, which is an expected output, he has rationalized objectively mm. that he can only get 1.6 billion dollars from fiscal revenues now the question is where is he going to get the remaining 4.4 billion dollars he also understood that there are limited resources within his cabinet mm. therefore what did he do he sat down and empaneled a crack team of experts as economic advisory team to help him fashion out the modalities the strategic framework with deliverable timelines on how to source for funding and the structures that can be adopted the dynamics to ensure he accomplishes his goals. And for crying out loud, this man came to power in May 2015, the same time as every other person. I used to live in Aja. Over a year ago, I moved because of traffic. I spent over seven hours in traffic, and I didn't find it fun. I had to move near to my place of office in Ikoi. Mm -hmm. But last week, something took me to Aja in the night, and I was saying, oh God, I'm going to stay in traffic for two hours. It took me less than 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of simple, simple things that he did. Go and look at the flyover there. Less than one year, the flyover is almost true. 
He's a government. Go and check his team. Look at the kind of team. From Augusto to Mubalaji Johnson to Drose Smith. It's a crack team of experts. Mm -hmm. And why won't Lagos get it right? Why will Lagos fail? The problem we have at the national level, and I'm sorry to say it, is putting round pegs in square holes. We don't mm -hmm. even have outputs. Let me give you another example. Mm -hmm. If we say we want to help the Naira, two critical things. How do we boost the supply side? And how do we curb the demand side? The only way we can curb the demand side is to ensure that we do not demand for consumption. If we are demanding, if we are spending $20 billion every year importing capital technology equipment that can help us produce here in Nigeria, I will tell you, Nigeria, Nigeria will not suffer. Mm. But the problem is that 80% of what we demand for that is for consumption. I will give you an example. On the usual petroleum product, over 30% of our forex revenues are wasted in importing what we can actually refine here. And I'll give you another example here. This day I read that DPR went to Kano to clamp down on Philly Station, who are saying yeah. at, at 155. And I'll tell you this, they are deceiving themselves. I will give you an example now. The CBN is providing subsidized dollar to importers at 306. As at yesterday and over the last three weeks, the average price per metric ton of PMS is going at $590. Per metric ton. A metric ton is 1,341 liters. If you divide it, even at the vessel offshore, the cost of a liter is 132 naira. Okay, let me By let the time me, you add the logistics cost, mm, mm. the average cost of bringing the product to the tank farm is about 142, 148 naira. Mm. The man that will come from Zanfara with a truck to come and load the product and go there, you cannot, in, in your car, if you he will... sells at less than 155, he will pack his things and go back to his village. Nigeria is not subsidizing this product. The, the policy makers are not coming up with measures either to totally privatize the refinery or to concession it to those who can run it to be able to produce what we can produce here mm -hmm. or to devise there are different measures that can be done you are not fixing the refineries you are not producing here you are not subsidizing product and you want to destroy so the man who is even trying to help us bring the product in uh, it's um, despicable now what the naira is suffering is only the result of all of these other factors yes. and so that if we put these policies in place the naira the by naira itself will let me will, tell you now what about the the delisting of 41 items and we hear that additional items may be delisted mm -hmm. from access to forex now the 41 items have been delisted officially already, from the official window from the official window Good. how has it helped the economy has it, it has it, it made it, any it difference has not at all helped. i will tell you why it has not helped if i am the minister for finance mm -hmm. If I am the Minister for Trade, Investment and Commerce, if I am the Director General of the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, what I would have done was simple. Mm -hmm. These items that we delisted, of course, they are taking money from the black market to bring them. Mm -hmm. That is why the inflation we have in Nigeria is imported. Mm -hmm. It's forex-linked inflation mm -hmm. because there is no basis for it. Somebody asked me, why will a bag of gari go up? A bag of gari will go up because the cost of buying a liter of fuel or diesel, mm -hmm. as a, two, a, a year and a half ago, a truck driver fills his tank at 92 naira per liter AGO. Today he fills his tank at 248 naira per liter. Of course the cost of transport will add. So the man that used to produce the bag of gari at 8 naira to bring it to Lagos will now use about 8 naira. So he must add, that is what has added mm. price to gari, mm. not because the man is adding it, because he has mm. to add the cost of transportation induced by the cost of petroleum product which is imported. Mm. Now simple. These 41 items, mm -hmm. can we authoritatively provide them? Pull them in? Yes, that is where these guys come in. All these interagency, there's no interagency handshake. What do we do? We can produce these things here. That's why they will ban them. Mm -hmm. That is why I get angry when they say they are increasing tariff on car. We don't even manufacture boats. Mm -hmm. No, no, the average Nigerian, 90% of Nigerians cannot buy new cars. The only solution to the poor man is the imported cars. The Tokumbo cars, mm. and you're putting Fairly a tariff, is. slapping a tariff on it. You can't slap a tariff on what you cannot produce. Somebody said Nigeria does not produce needles. That Needle. well, that the day that Nigeria can produce needle, then we can actually produce the now aircraft. Now the question is, those 41 <laughs> then items. What are we producing? We know it, the it, importers of those 41 items. Mm. It's very mm -hmm. simple. Identify them. Who are those exporters that export to you? We sit down with them, organize a round table. We encourage them, provide the direction. Who bring the factories and produce here? Government can subsidize production rather than consumption. Who we'll sign take and uh, take uh, take off uh, off take agreement? Mm -hmm. Whatever you produce, we will buy. Those guys that manufacture those military wares in Pakistan, in India, if you bring them here, everything you produce here, we can buy four million worth of those goods. They set up your factory here. We will guarantee you whatever you produce here, we will buy. When you want to take your money out, we we'll provide you incentives 
buy back, you hedge your dollar. And so, okay, you can do a forward. You can allow them to do three year, four year forward. That is it. But banning them, why okay. you don't produce them here? And the cost of producing them here is very, very expensive. Now we talk about power. What are we even talking about here? It is atrocious to do business in Nigeria because you contend with power issues. What of the road and railway? We are going to borrow 11.8 billion dollars to do direct funding of railway. The railway act that the state government does is 95 the railway act. Nigeria railway corporation has been so inefficient mm. for 18 years. They were already bank they were bankrupt until the Jonathan government came and revived them. It will have been very very simple. Go to the UK, go to Latin Arab Emirates, go to America, go to even South Korea, go to even Brazil. Here, how do they run their rail system? Mm. What I would have expected us to do is to sit down, first of all, amend the 1955 railway act to allow private concessionaires to come in. Concession those rail lines. Bring him on, you, it will give you a dollar. They said they would do it, I thought they would do it, and later they reversed it. Mm. But I can tell you why they will not do it. They won't do it because such measures will not allow them to pay for money here and there. Somebody said that they are trying to do direct funding to be able to raise money for 2019. I don't know about it. But I can tell you, <laughs> if we decide to concern so the railway and bring the experts, we'll be bring at the, root of the our network problems. managers. Mm. Can, the Lagos can a different railway network marketer. Mm -hmm. The Portacot Meduguri, a different network operator. Mm. Lagos, Lagos Calabar. to Portacot, mm. the southwest southeast, which is the busiest link, does not have any rail line. Who can have somebody that can take off that? And we we'll give them timeline. Working with the World Bank, provide them incentive, import guarantees for their equipment and everything, mm. and allow them to run. Provide two regulatory agencies, one that will manage and make sure that the relationship between the railway operators and those that will provide the coaches, both freight and passenger, are well woven. And the second is that we show that quality service. It is in the UK. See, you make it sound so easy when you when you you <laughs> know talk about so, those so things easy. like this. You but then again, is, so, so is the Nigeria economy is it attractive enough for these foreign investors to actually come in? You know, when you say, go to US, go to because is, a one is Nigeria U really proving to them that it's ready to do business? Nigeria has ev Nigeria ticks the right boxes for any rational investor. A population of 180 million, mm -hmm. over 80 million of them between the age of 18 and 45. Yes. Very skillful workforce. See, Nigerians are the, some of the most educated. Go to the UK universities, go to the United States universities. Some of the best and brightest human beings in the world are Nigerians. From Harvard to Yale yeah. to Columbia, you will see Nigerians in every class. We have the resources in Nigeria here. We have the right market. It's only for us to be able to sit down and provide focused and well tailored policy pro and programs. Interconnected and programs, not Abuja pulling one weight, mm. the other state pulling one weight. Interagency linked policies. But, I but, will tell but, you this every investor will be ready. We want to come to Nigeria. But the problem is that we do not provide them with the, the concrete, right concise program and policies, see-through policies that can enable them to form an outlook. Mm. Today, we'll say we're concession. We will announce it, people will clap. The next day, we'll go to the direct funding. Let me tell you, ask anybody, the UK public sector is so efficient, but yet in 1993, they decided to go by the word PPPP. Mm. United Kingdom has a landmass of 224,000 square kilometers. They have a record of about 16,000 kilometers. Nigeria has a landmass of 908,000 square something. kilometers. Mm -hmm. We have a record of less than 3,000 kilometers. Wow, that's See, a big deficit. Nigeria economy is, is, is more profitable mm. than the UK economy, mm. than the Brazilian economy. It competes with some of the best economies in the world. But all we will need to do is to provide focused leadership, mm. put the right Pegs in, in, the the right right in the right hole. All right. All right. Our problem is America, the issue of putting people mm. that don't even understand the basics. All right, L let's let's come back to ah. this uh, shortly uh, because you have provoked the minds. <laughs> because listening to all of this now and checking where we are, you see you see that there's a great deficit. But we'll come to look at all of these even more. Let's go on a break and we come back on the program. Stay with us. Right here, welcome back. You're watching TVC Breakfast. We're looking at the Naira and the option of devaluing the currency. Well, depends on which side of the divide you belong to. Some say it's already been devalued, and others say, look, devaluing the Naira 
would not help the economy. Now, well, Namika say it is over devalued. It's already, already over, over devalued. We have Namika Obere yeah. with us in the studio, and he has been taking us through uh, a, a mind provoking analysis in here. Now, uh, Namika, you talked much about issue of policy, but in all of this, mm -hmm. is it just in the hands of government? We have powerful, rich, resourceful capital-based Nigerian uh, private sector people, businessmen who have finances, who have resources, who have mm. network across the world. Why are they not taking advantage of that? Is it just the government? Mike, mm. policies and programs of government drives private sector participation. I will tell you this. It's an economy that can attract as much as $100 billion every year if we put the right programs in place. and the right policies in place. I'll give you an example. Take, for instance, the power policy. If the national grid is not working, why do we still have a policy in our power policy architecture that insists that if you produce captive power of over 5 megawatts, you will feed the excess into the national grid? Why are we still maintaining a single national grid that is not working, that have proven not to work, when we should have bacchanized it, mm, it's in, it bacchanized and interlinked it into regions oh, and appoint different concessionaires. Mm. The other day, you saw the new the 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 noise being made. It, the uh, African Development Bank yeah. decided they are going to give about one hundred seventy-five well, million dollars mm -hmm. to the TCN, the yeah. Transition Company of Nigeria. And of course, they said uh, they are going to bring management and everything that will run it. National Assembly invited the people, the, the management and the staff of TCN raised dust. You and I know that AFDB does not have, do, will not go there to change management and manage it. AFDB will have had a private concessionaire they've been talking with, who will also bring part of their funding to run it. Aku Wumi Adeshino, God bless him, the current president of AFDB was mm -hmm. our minister, our past minister of agriculture and natural resources. Yeah. And of course, we all saw what he did in Nigeria. Under his tenor, we could understand where we are going to in terms of agri revolution and reformation. Now, they are opposing it because they know that if the TCN should be concessioned in an appropriate manner, private sector investments will come. Most of those redundant personnel there will go. I ask yourself this question. The problem was every year we'll spend over 1.8 trillion naira paying public sector wage bill. Wage bill for most of, I'm sorry to say, 70% of those, those projects are redundant, mm. adding no value to our national economy. If we decide now and say to ourselves, we want to go forward, we want to help Naira, we must, the police must be there, the police must be right. In the power sector, the gas pricing model is not also right for private sector to participate. If, for example, when I said, okay, I want to take out, I want to provide power to everybody within Aja Axis. Mm -hmm. Of course, Aja is covered by Eco Disco. Or I can say, okay, we want to set up a cluster where we can set up factories, like the government thing I told you. Yes. The federal government working with the state governor said, okay, we want to set up a government center that can be powered on ISO with an independent power plant of 20 megawatts. Would they allow them to consume the 20 megawatts without selling the balance to so the national grid? Mm -hmm. These are issues. Another issue again, we raised an issue in 2008. I worked with a group, Nigeria in Diaspora Europe. We wanted to float an equity-linked fund of about $20 million. $20 million was for them to take advantage of real estate development in Nigeria. We have diasporas outside there that can bring as much as $35 billion into this economy every year. I have a friend who brought in 10,000 pounds, changed it into Naira and put it in his savings account. When the Naira went on a downward spin, <laughs> the guy panicked. <laughs> he saw his money the value so much that his 10,000 pounds became, became 5,000 pounds because he could no longer stomach it. He was scared that it would go to 1,000 because of mm. fear. Mm. The guy had to change back his naira so to, to pounds. pounds and took it back. Somebody brought in 10,000 pounds in 2014. When the naira went on test speed, the guy was even scared about it. If he does not take his money back, it may go to 1,000 to 1 pounds. The guy lost 5,000 pounds because he brought his money back home in a deposit money bank in Nigeria. Isn't that what's happening to investors that yes, are moving so they, out of the country because of this, they are, this policy, they don't even know the direction. Now, let me give you an example. Mm. We did, a, we did a, pro, a proposal. These guys want to build houses in Nigeria. The average Igbo man, let me even talk about those from the southeast. Mm -hmm. The average Igbo man will want to, even if he's a billionaire in London, he must have to, he would like to bring, we we'll call it Akurula. He want to bring mm. his investment home. 
Go and look, even if he's looking in two bedroom in Lagos, you want to build a mansion in the village. Yes. Now, we developed that program for those in diaspora. Some of them may not want to live in the village, but they want to live out of the village. For those of them for him, they want to live in nowhere. For those in Enugu, they want to live in Enugu town. The arrangement was, but to make it very transparent, because money issue is a very is mm, issue that requires sensitive. accountability and transparency. Mm. We said that we have to go through the way of SEC by going to so we can have professionals, reporting accountants, trustees that will help them mine this fund. They will bring this fund and this fund will be used to develop real estate for them. But the problem was that by the time you went to the regulators, they will start making money, you must list it. This guy did not want to list it. We just wanted to provide them with a very transparent window for them to bring in their money. Mm. I have said to the federal government of Nigeria and I have said in different fora, we can tap into these diaspora funds. We can raise up, we can do commercial papers. CBN working with investment bankers and commercial banks. Commercial bank notes or long-term notes linked to projects. These guys, they will invest in it. If you go to Europe, if you go to America, the rate of return on deposit is so low. The rate of the monetary policy rate in, in, in some Asian and European mm -hmm. is negative in, in, in the negative yeah. in the US 14 percent. If you provide such guaranteed link notes tied to projects you know, in a very transparent manner mm. and ask these guys to invest their money 5%, at 10%, at 6%, at 3%, they will prefer to bring their money, start leaving their money in, a, in an account at mm. 2%, to invest it here at 5%. Mm -hmm. If they are sure that this money should be given back them when they want it, of course, 9 over 10. They won't take those monies back. So this they is a template. This is a template Templates. that the Nigerian government can actually take advantage exactly. of. Exactly. Well, like we are they not say, like the, the, of like, housing. like the Japanese say, good thinking, good product. <laughs> exactly. So, good thinking is not there yet. Is it's that what there. the problem is? We have. They are. They are organized. Nigerian diaspora Europe, Nigerian diaspora Asia. These guys are so organized. And they are willing to support us here So in now, uh, uh, Mika, now that the Naira by itself continues to devalue, continues to nosedive, and you have the, the IMF on one hand telling Nigeria, look, devalue your currency and increase your VAT, uh, some professionals are saying, yeah, maybe we need to increase it from 5% to maybe 7.5%. You have JP Morgan advising the same thing. Devalue your currency and all of that. How what what do we make of all of this? We don't need when J the currency we, 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 as we, far as we don't need JP Morgan Chase mm -hmm. or the World Bank to advise or us IMF on what for that to matter. Do. The same way nobody will advise Mike on how to pay school fees for his children or how to arrange his meals mm -hmm. for morning to evening. Mm -hmm. If we do the proper things, let me tell you, money is fungible, capital is limited, and capital will always flow to where to an environment mm. that will maximize return. Yeah. Out there, we have over ten trillion dollars in shadow funding. Ten trillion dollars in shadow funding. Funds mm. enhanced endowment funds, mm. private businesses that are not banks that will want to maximize their returns. If we give them the right policy programs, right policy and programs that can be seen through, programs that are sustainable. What 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 are some of these policies in um, in the short term? Nigeria is in a recession. Yes. And the hope is being put out there that, look, this year, 2017, Nigeria will be pulled out of recession and all of that. What are those policies in the immediate, maybe medium term and the long term, if you can briefly you know, put it together, it, that governments, government needs to put in place? Because the hope and perception mm -hmm. goes a long way in convincing somebody where you're going to. Mm -hmm. I'll give an example in the issue of oil and gas. Currently, we are posing at 1.9 million barrels a day. Yes. Kachuku Ibe said, and I agree with him, that we are capable of producing over 3 million barrels a day. Mm -hmm. But the fear is the activities of the guys in the Naira Delta region, the NDA. Which the, seems the, to have slowed down anyway. Yes, this is some level of stability. Of course, he, like I told you, it's a matter of treating the symptom. And not the disease. And not the root cause. I'm sure I don't know what they've given to them that made them to pipe low. In the next one year, if we don't provide structural, constitutional solution to this problem, other group will emerge. It will continue. It will become a very ugly cycle. What do we do? If the government can come up to that and say, hey guys, the structure we have is not working. But you know, I'm, we are just new, just two years. This, we are trying to fix something that happened over the last 16 years. Mm. Give us time. Over the next two, three years, we are going to revisit restructuring of Nigeria. 
When we talk about restructuring, people think that we're talking about bacchanizing Nigeria. That's, no, that's a bad word. In 1966, right now, for some people, there's a lot of suspicion around. In 1966, Nigeria had 46% of the control of the crude palm oil market. Hmm. In 1966, before 1966, Nigeria had a land chunk of control of the cocoa industry. Cocoa, world cocoa, uh, cocoa yeah. supply from Southwest. Hmm. The cotton, the granite pyramid. Why? Because we had what we call resource control. Resource control simply means bake your own. Mm -hmm. Take half, bring half the center. Resource control enabled, we enable your neighbor, not everybody who carries his plate to come to your house to come and eat food. To bring food to the center, everyone will share. If he's bringing okra, mm. you're bringing a yam. The other man is bringing oil. People will not share it to produce rich food. Mm. Then where I will bring my yam, you have no okra, you have no tomato, you have no oil, you will eat raw yam. We must have to cook the yam. If we, if you now say it, okay, hey guys, in over the last one, we are going to go back to the structure that works for us. KB and Lagos, they are partnering to produce rice. I said this here last mm -hmm. time I, I came to this place. Mm -hmm. Kogi has potentials to be the rice belt of Nigeria, to earn over 100 billion naira annually, producing and processing rice and even exporting it. Mm -hmm. But we must provide the right incentive. And that right incentive is to make sure that we overhaul the fiscal, 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 mm -hmm. the governance, the political autonomous structure of this country. Take it back to pre-1966, where people developed at their own pace. In 1964, gave free education and provided free food for 400,000 students in the Southwest. Mm. He did not sustain it with crude oil. There was no crude oil any for mm -hmm. him then. Mm -hmm. Today, the federal government is finding it difficult and challenging to fulfill their promise of feeding students mm. in school. Because they don't even know how to go about it. Resource control. If we say, okay, now we're talking about that. If you say, if you just make this, you've not done it, just say it with, in good faith. We are going to and tell, give timelines working with the National Assembly, National Assembly, how you're going to do it. Yeah. Let me tell you, resource control will beneficial to everybody. The North has bigger potential than the South. I'm telling you the truth. Because they have the landmass. Agri so the why are place. those who are afraid of resource control or restructuring? Why are they afraid? They are afraid because they are the lazy. Most of them, the ninety percent of those who are afraid of resource control, are the leeches, the political office holders who want to continue to those that have continued to steal and loot from us. All right. Those unproductive Let's, segments. Okay. Uh, they well, are the ones. The average Nigerian, the Talakawa, the masses. Who truly, if we truly educate them on the importance of resource control, we want to we'll support all, it. All right, Nemeka, we'll still come back to this. Uh, let's go on a break. we come back to dwell more on this. And don't forget, top of the hour, the time for the news update mm -hmm. with Azizat. Stay with us. Right, thanks for staying with us. We're still talking about the health of the Naira, uh, mm -hmm. talking about the devaluation option. Uh, we have uh, Nemeka Biari with us in here. Just a few minutes, we'll be going for the news update. Now, Nemeka, the, the, when this present administration started, the, the trips to the east, China, a lot of Nigerians saw lots of ray of hope from that window. But if we have to narrow it down to the currencies, how can the yuan help the Naira at this critical stage? Uh, you know, that they, made, they told us about the yuan mm. Naira swap mm. two years after. What has become of it? You see, the problem we have is the problem of communication. Democracy and progressive governance thrives on accountability, transparency, honesty, and probity. When you people that you govern cannot trust you, when they cannot believe every word that comes out of your mouth, then there's a big problem. If those you govern cannot trust things that come out of your mouth, mm. there's no way foreigners can trust you. I give example. I said, if we have the right sources in place, you see, states like Lagos State, Anambra State, and Cross River State, they're actually being dragged back by the... I'm telling you this because if you look at the models in these three states, P2B started laid the right foundation and will you be continued? You can see progress progression. Lagos State government, thanks to Ashwaji Bolati Nibu, see what is happening in Lagos State. They have a plan. If those you govern cannot trust things that come out of your mouth, mm. there's no way foreigners can trust you. I give example. I said, if we have the right sources in place, you see, states like Lagos State, 
Anambra State and Crossover State, they are actually being dragged back by the. I'm telling you because if you look at the models in these three states, P2B started laid the right foundation, and Willie Obiano is continued. You can see progress progression. Lagos State Government, thanks to Ashwaji Bola Tinibu, see what is happening in Lagos State. They have a plan. What Taki Wumi Ambode is implementing is a plan that has been in place over time. That is why you can see him Moving flying at the speed of light. T2025. The same thing for Cross River State. Don't do clear the right foundation. Go and see what they are doing. But I tell you this, these states are being hampered. Because of the policy, some of the silly flops you have in Abuja. All right, let, let's let's go in for the news update. We'll come back to uh, talk more on this, yeah. on how the UN can help the Naira if there's any way. So it's no longer a question of whether to devalue the Naira or not. The fundamentals that need to be in place are what... Uh, Nemeka Oberi has been talking about uh, it's it's really wide um, this morning. Well, you were talking about uh, you know the Naira swap, the Naira swap. Yes, you want to do that very briefly and yes. very briefly too but, because we yeah, we uh, we have to wrap uh, this. The planned twenty five billion dollar infrastructure fund, which uh, the presidency has said, will actually take the place of devaluing the Naira. I want you to look at those um, two. Two Before, things you yes. talked about the Yuan Naira swap mm -hmm. over the last one year, we've not heard anything about it. And let me tell you, who is even talking about Naira Yuan swap? The same Chinese that were talking about swapping their currency with the Naira or whatever they want to do. Go and check the volume of the US instrument that they're holding. Most of their investment are in dollar. They're putting their own investment <laughs> and their own distance in dollar. Now, the question is what we need from China. For example, not the rail project that we say we want to do. Mm -hmm. We don't want them to come and do rail line, and the same NRC will manage it. Amend the 1955 Railway Act. There are rail operators in China, those that manage their rail network, those that manage their coaches. Bring them to come and partner with us here. Concession those lines. Let them bring in their equipment, their technology. Let them bring in their coaches. Let them be the concessioners and manage it. If they want us to, Pay them in Naira in exchange to their swap, uh, whatever they call it. They are you want who do it. These are practical things. All this big grammar you want Naira swap, you want dollars swap. Over the last year, what has become of it? Mm. We must add what we need from China. China has technology, we don't have technology. Mm -hmm. Of course, over time, we will get technology. What we need from China is for those things like the railway line, like the power and all those stuff. Those things they can provide. They have companies. Let me tell you, I was privileged to advise one power project in the north 150 uh, 210 million dollar project the chinese provided the chinese um, um exit provided 25 year money for them 25 year money at low interest why would they do it because the chinese will provide equipment mm. the chinese will provide turbine the chinese will also provide the manpower and operators mm. the chinese will run it the chinese want to export their technology that is what we want and we need those technology to develop our economy yeah. not all these stories of you want to okay. what you don't know then on the issue of 25 billion dollar mm -hmm. infrastructure, infrastructure fund, fund. it's good but because it's not just enough to just throw things out there hmm. we need to know what are the designs the structure this the the the, the, the structuring mm -hmm. and how is it going to be executed what sectors of the economy are we going to are we talking about the infrastructure we're talking about the funding mm -hmm. you need to support railway you Roads, support power um, you that, support that. under what financing structure or education structure is it going to be ppp is it going to be? that's the kind of things we want to do it's very very good 25 billion dollar is okay it's good but we must understand and not okay. just enough saying it we must also bring in the right people mm -hmm. the right people look at what lagos state government is doing yeah. in lagos state government they look for the best Ben Akabeze was their budget and planning um, commissioner for eight years. He's at the center now. Ben Zubanambra State. Mm. When they messed up in Abuja, the, the budget office messed up. They had to, Lagos State had to lend him to Abuja. <laughs> okay. That well, is how Nigeria well, should be run. I w Nemeka. wish we could continue um, with this, uh, but we want to say thank you so much, Nemeka Obiari, financial analyst, and just shedding a light on it. This whole issue for us to even understand further, it's more fundamental. It goes deeper than just talking about the rate or the value of the no, Naira. the value of the Naira. Thank there are so, so many much. fundamentals. All right, uh, this is where we round this off now, but we'll come up with the next topic immediately. Stay with us.